We begin tonight with breaking news on the January 6th committee and multiple reports that the committee is eyeing criminal referrals for twice impeached, disgraced former President Donald Trump. While NBC News reports that the committee has yet to make a final decision, we do know that it's actively considering recommending charges for insurrection, obstruction of an official proceeding of Congress, and conspiracy. It all comes down to the final public hearing held by the committee on Monday, where the committee will vote to adopt its final report and vote on referrals. The public will see the highly anticipated report two days after that. It has been quite the saga, January 6th, from the viral spectacle to a full-blown constitutional crisis. The assault on our democracy didn't end that day. It expanded, infecting everything from social media to Congress itself, as Republicans and the MAGA movement defended the man at the center of it all. And yet, it also exposed the guardrails that exist to protect our democracy. The bipartisan committee that secured testimony mainly from Trump's own former staffers and Republican allies, the millions of Americans who watched on television or online, the elected officials who denounced Trump and the handful of Republicans like Liz Cheney who stood up to their party. Being on the committee proved to be a political liability. Congresswoman Cheney and Elaine Luria, another January 6th member, lost their seats. Members Stephanie Murphy and Adam Kinzinger didn't seek re-election. You have to wonder if they saw the writing on the wall. Justice can come slowly or not at all, as has been the case for Teflon Don his entire life. But that might change come Monday. And for committee member Kinzinger, who's leaving Congress next month, it was all worth it. In his farewell speech this week, he made sure to call out what is possibly the greater threat, those in Congress who are plotting to destroy democracy from within. Had I known that standing up for truth would cost me my job, friendships, and even my personal security, I would, without hesitation, do it all over again. I can rest easy at night, knowing that I fulfilled my oath to the office. I know many in this institution cannot do the same. Unfortunately, we now live in a world where lies trump truth, where democracy is being challenged by authoritarianism. If we, America's elected leaders, do not search within ourselves for a way out, I fear that this great experiment will fall into the ash heap of history. Joining me now is Charles Coleman, Jr., civil rights attorney, former prosecutor, and MSNBC legal analyst. Glenn Kirshner, MSNBC legal analyst and former federal prosecutor. And Hugo Lowell, congressional reporter for The Guardian. I'm going to start with you, Hugo. Uh, what can you tell us? Because there is some reporting that's out there that says that the committee members have made a decision. NBC News has not confirmed that. What are you hearing? Yeah, look, we've reported uh, today that the select committee is considering uh, several options against Trump, principally the obstruction of an official proceeding uh, statute and conspiracy to defraud the United States. Now, you know, the select committee has been hearing from the subcommittee, uh, specially established to consider the issue of referrals for several days now. Like, you know, they met on Sunday. They met during this week around votes. And even last night, they were still discussing it. And so I think this kind of reflects a a, a a bit of progress in what the committee is trying to do before the Monday uh, public business meeting next week, where they're going to vote on these referrals. Uh, and I think I should just mention that these are really specific uh, charges that they are looking at. They took a renewed look at the evidence and they said, you know, what is an actual crime here? And they actually settled on multiple things. And for instance, with the obstruction of an official proceeding, they looked at this and said, you know what? Even attempting to obstruct the congressional certification on January 6th is illegal. And we, the subcommittee, believe that we should make a criminal referral against Donald Trump. And it's interesting, and I'm going to go to you first on this, Glenn, because, you know, Judge Carter, a previous judge, said that he looked at what John Eastman did and said it was likely that he had committed, along with Donald Trump, uh, potential felonies regarding trying to interfere with Congress. So just to go through just a little bit to remind folks and refresh folks' memory, here is Donald Trump actually praising Eastman, who spoke on the Olympics. Eastman did, saying, we know there was fraud, traditional fraud that occurred. We know dead people voted. We are all demanding that Vice President Pence this afternoon at 1 o'clock let the the legislatures of the state look at this so that he can get to the bottom of it, yada, 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 basically demanding that Mike Pence overturn the election. And here's Trump's praise of him after that. John is one of the most brilliant lawyers in the country, and he looked at this and he said, what an absolute disgrace that this could be happening to our Constitution. And he looked at Mike Pence, and I hope Mike is going to do the right thing. I hope so. 
I hope so. Because if Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. After that, John Eastman pleaded the fifth a bunch of times when he testified before the committee. So, Glenn, you know, do, do you see legal jeopardy for Eastman in this? And in theory, if he's in jeopardy, is Trump in jeopardy, too? Yeah, they're both in jeopardy, Joy, and I'm so glad you brought up the ruling by federal uh, district court judge out in California, David Carter, because it kind of feels like we are in this upside down, bizarro criminal justice world, because we have two co-equal branches of government that, based on the evidence, have reached conclusions that Donald Trump and others committed crimes against the United States, federal felonies. We have Judge David Carter in California ruling after an evidentiary hearing that by a preponderance of the evidence, and that's a really important evidentiary standard, by a preponderance of the evidence, um, uh, John Eastman, together with Donald Trump, committed two federal felonies, obstruction of an official proceeding, trying to stop the certification of Joe Biden's win, and a conspiracy to commit offenses against and defraud the United States. And it sounds like, based on Hugo's reporting, those are precisely two of the crimes that Congress has also concluded there's enough evidence to make a criminal referral on. When in the world do we have the judiciary and the legislative branch taking the lead on amassing evidence and reaching conclusions that these men should be prosecuted with the executive branch, the Department of Justice, the FBI, lagging behind. I mean, usually it is the Department of Justice that takes the lead, announcing through its indictments that crimes have been committed. This is not the way law enforcement ordinarily plays out. Yeah, it, it is. It is odd. And Charles Coleman, you know, uh, Mr. Hirshhorn, I believe it's John Hirshhorn, uh, his, whatever his first name is, Hirshhorn. Um, this is what he testified to um, regarding what he said to John Eastman after he learned of what Eastman was up to. And he, he, Hirschman, this is what Mr. Hirschman said regarding Eastman. Take a listen. I said to him, are you out of your effing mind? Right. I said, I said, I only want to hear two words coming out of your mouth for now on. Orderly transition. Eventually, he said, orderly transition. I said, good, John. Now I'm going to give you the best free legal advice you're ever getting in your life. Get a great effing criminal defense lawyer. You're going to need it. And so Hirschman is saying that to Eastman, Charles, because he understood that what he was saying was criminal. So he's saying, stop saying that and say things that are legal. And he wants him to say East, East, orderly transition of power. But Eastman has, since the year 2000, had this theory that state legislatures could overturn the will of the people and appoint their own electors. This is something that goes back to the year 2000, when he tried to pull that same game in Florida. So the theory of the case, Charles, would be that because Eastman had the plan, he had had the memo that said, here's how you do it, here's how you undo it, and he somehow convinced Trump that this could be done, that was the impetus for Trump to commit this crime. Is that the way that you'd be looking at it as a prosecutor? That's absolutely right, Joy, and I'm glad you brought up Eastman's history with respect to this theory. He has been pushing this literally for over two decades at this point, going back to the Al, v, Al Gore v. George Bush issue in Florida. And I think everything that Glenn and Hugo have said just underscores how absolutely mind-blowing where we are is. Think about this. We are on the precipice of a former president of the United States of America getting a criminal referral from Congress to the DOJ to prosecute him for trying to overturn an election. I know we've said it so many different times, but when you really think about how absolutely mind-blowing that is, it's truly absurd. The question has been so far, are we going to be able to connect Donald Trump to the actual activity that took place? Are we going to be able to connect Donald Trump to this state elector scheme that took place? And with respect to John Eastman as the linchpin and that memo that you described, that's exactly how they intend to do it as prosecutors if this referral takes place, which I expect it likely will. And, and the referral could be for more than one person. Let's just be clear. We, 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 the, the reporting is that it potentially could be against the former president. But let me just read to you, um, Hugo. This is what the criminal code says about rebellion and insurrection. The U.S. criminal code says, whoever incites, sets foot, assists, or engages in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States uh, or gives aid or comfort thereto shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than 10 years or both shall be incapable. This is the important part of holding any office under the United States. Um, that's also in the 14th Amendment. And 
so the question comes, is in your reporting the committee considering referrals against anyone else uh, besides Donald Trump? Because this, in theory, could apply to some members of Congress. And that becomes a political uh, sticky potential situation if they are putting referrals forward on other members. Yeah, I think you raise a really good point with that statute. And that's, you know, that's the element about not being able to hold office again. And right. the reason why the committee has been examining this is because while well, with Trump, you know, they really find him a danger to democracy and they don't think he should be a eligible to be uh, president ever again. And so they have been discussing this in, in kind of recent days. And I should also mention, they've also been discussing seditious conspiracy, just to give you a, a sense of really what they're looking at and how seriously they consider what Trump did in the lead up to January 6th and on January 6th itself. But yeah, look, they're looking at referrals for a number of people, both criminal and civil. You know, they're looking at criminal referrals for Trump, potentially other allies around him, but also civil uh, re referrals. People like, you know, the House Republicans who defied subpoenas, they might get referred to the House Ethics Committee. But I think you raise a really good point in that, you know, we might even see criminal referrals for House members because it is true that that disqualification statute is so important. And the committee has been looking at that for so long and really trying to figure out if this is something that they should bring.